In this video, I'll show you how to change your voice in real time to any voice that you want so that you can use it in any app such as Discord. Whether it's training our own voices or downloading pre-trained voices from the internet, we'll cover it all in this video from A to Z. So let's get right to it. In detail, that means we'll first have a look at what the input files, the ones used to train the voice, need to look like and prepare them if we need to. Then we install RVCV2 and train the voice in the tool. But in case you don't want to do any of that yourself and are happy with using celebrity voices instead, we'll also look at how and where to download pre-trained voices. Then we'll install the live voice changer. But to use the voice in Discord, we'll need to install additional software that lets us connect the voice changer to Discord. However, this introduces a bug that leads to crackling audio, which we then also need to fix. This may sound like a lot, but it's actually super easy if you follow this video closely. To train a good voice model, we need to have about 10 minutes of our input voice without any additional sounds or noises. Ideally, the voice speaks in different tones and emotions. And if you want to use the voice model for singing, then the input voice should also be singing. But we'll cover that in another video and we'll focus on speaking in this video. The input voice can be in MP3 or WAV format and can be split across multiple files. As you might want to use the voice from a video that you find online, I'm showing you how to extract the audio from a video file that you see here. Theory and practice between the ideas that motivated uh, or that helped the founders to structure it. There's also some music at the start that we want to get rid of. So to do that, I'm using a free tool called Audacity. You just need to make sure that under preferences and then libraries, FFmpeg is detected. After we open the video file in Audacity, we need to cut the intro with the music at the start. You just highlight the parts you want to remove and then go to edit, delete. I'm only using about 10 minutes. You can go higher and you can also go lower, although going lower is not recommended but sometimes there's no other way. Then export the file either as WAV or MP3. You can now delete the video file if you want to. If you need to remove more noises than just an intro from your input audio file, then check out Ultimate Vocal Remover. This will give you a clean audio file as output with only the vocals and without any additional noises. It's pretty straightforward to use, works great for removing vocals from songs, and we'll have a closer look at it in a future video where we focus on cloning voices for singing. To install RVCV2, we open the link from the description and download the file called rvcbeta.7z, which we then need to extract. Delete the zip archive if you want to. And we move the folder with our input voice into the RVC Beta V2 folder. And to start the tool, we can from now on run go web.bat, which should open the user interface in your default web browser. This is what it looks like. But for us, the only tab within the tool that's relevant is the one that says train. So we start on the top by giving our experiment a new name. I'm calling it lecturer. The only other thing we are changing in the top row is the version of the model architecture, which we'll set to V2. Make sure that the rest of the default settings match the settings that you see here. To point it to our input audio file or files, we simply copy the path in Windows Explorer and paste it in the field that says path to training folder. Then we click on process data. Make sure you wait until the command window in the back says end preprocess twice. Next, for what the tool calls step 2b, we need to make sure that the number corresponding to our GPU is entered here. And then we click on Feature Extraction. You know it's done when the command window says All Feature Done. Then we'll set the saving frequency to 50. 
and the ideal number of epochs is a bit of its science in itself. What worked for me so far is using 300 epochs for about 10 minutes of input size or 600 epochs for about 30 minutes. But you can also go higher or lower and just experiment for yourself. We then set it to save only the latest CKPT file. And if the rest of the settings look the same for you, then you're good to go. Should you run into any issues like running out of memory, try to reduce the batch size to two or one. Otherwise, just leave it as it is. We'll then click on one-click training, which is a bit redundant since the tool is now running the previous steps again. But this is the workflow that always worked for me without any bugs or issues. Depending on your graphics card and the number of epochs, this can take a few hours. Once it's done, it'll say saving final CKPT success. Then we go back to the user interface one final time and click on train feature index. This will produce a PTH file that you can find under weights in the RVC beta folder. Additionally to training your own custom voices, you can download pre-trained voices from various sources, one of them being the AI Hub Discord, which has a huge selection of voices. So first check the Discord before training a voice of a popular person. You'll find the link to the Discord as well as links to other sites that let you download RVC models in the video description. You can usually preview the voices before downloading and the downloads should come in a zip file. When you unzip them, you might notice that there's modular files in them that we'll need in our next step. To finally use the models, be it the one we trained ourselves or the ones we downloaded, we need to install the voice changer by W. Okada. So we open the link from the video description, which leads us to the Git of the tool. We scroll down and we can see instructions for different hardware configurations that tell us which files to download, in this video, we'll only look at how to use it on Windows with an NVIDIA GPU, but it also works with AMD hardware or on Mac OS. So a bit further down, we find the latest version on top of that list, and we pick the version that the instruction told us to. That is the one that says CPU CUDA. There's two links here. Google might not always work. In that case, just use the Hugging Face link. Once the file is downloaded, we extract it, delete the zip archive when it's done, and run the file that is called starthttp.bat. Then you should see warning from Windows where we click on more info and then on run anyway. Now, as far as I can tell, you only need to give it internet access in case you want to use it as a server and access it from outside of your PC or network. As long as you're only using it on your PC locally, then you should be fine at giving it access and clicking on cancel. And you can always change it later in the Windows firewall settings. Now that we can see the live voice changer tool, let's have a look at the various settings first. Here's two of the most important options chunk and extra. Chunk determines how much of the voice is converted at once and extra determines how much past voice is included in the conversion. That means if we choose a low value for the chunk size, then we'll get a voice that's lower quality but also has a low delay. A high volume on the other hand means the voice will be high quality but will also have a high delay. I recommend using values in the range of 256 to 512. A low value for extra also will result in lower quality and shorter processing time, while higher values mean higher quality and longer processing. So both values, extra and chunk, are a trade-off. If your GPU is up for the task, you can use a high value for the extra. So play around with these settings a bit and you'll find a good compromise. Here you can select your graphics card and for input and output, select your microphone and speakers or headphones. Down here, you can find the advanced settings. As a final resort, if you can't get the voice to sound good, try increasing the truncate value. For now, 
we will leave it at 100. F0DT lets you select an algorithm for extracting the pitch of the voice, with DIO being the lightweight version that you can try if you're running this on older hardware. Harvest means high precision and crappy is GPU enabled. And now we're gonna select a build invoice from the top here and click on start. So I can now speak with the voice of these anime characters in real time. And you can switch between the voices almost instantly. Which is a bit creepy if you ask me, just like my voice right now. And if it doesn't sound good enough for you, then you can still play around with the settings as we just saw. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's still quite good, I think. But now let's add the voice that we trained earlier. We click on edit and can now click on upload on one of the empty slots. Here it's important that the voice changer type is set to RVC. And then we first upload the model file, which is the PTH file. And we find that in the weights folder of RVC beta v2. It is also asking us for an index file, which we find under logs, then lecturer. Since there's two index files, make sure you select the one that starts with edit. For the downloaded voice models, the process is the same and we should find both the index as well as the PTH file in the zip that we extracted earlier. So we can now also speak in the voices of the model that we trained ourselves, Or in the voices of the models that we downloaded. Ready for action. To use the voices in Discord, we need to use additional software which is acting as a virtual cable connecting our voice changer with apps such as Discord or Skype or any other voice app. The software is free and is called VB Audio. After you open the link that you can find in the video description, you can download the Windows installer. We unzip the file and run VB Cable Setup as administrator. If you don't run it as admin, it won't work. We confirm and then when it's done, reboot our PC. So in Discord in the settings, we go to voice and video where we can now see an entry called cable output that we can select as input device. We switch back to the voice changer and for output, we select the entry saying cable input. We hit start and we can now do a mic check in Discord. And if for you the voice sounds exactly like the output of the voice changer software, then that's great and you can ignore the next step. But if you get a crackling voice in Discord that sounds like this, the quality is very bad and it's crackling, then we need to fix it. We hit the Windows key and type task so that we get the option to run task manager as administrator. Navigate to the details tab and right click on the audio DG executable. First, we set the priority to high. But what's more important is that we also set the affinity to only use one CPU core. It doesn't really matter which CPU core you select, but I recommend choosing one with a low number so that it's a physical core. And it's instantly fixed. By the way, the voice models that we trained and downloaded are compatible with RVC GUI, which lets you clone your voice in non-real time, but with a bit higher quality. That's how I make the voice I'm using right now. And if you're interested, you can find out more in this AI voice playlist, which also includes a video on AI text-to-speech. And if you're curious about generating AI images, I made some tutorials about making AI QR codes, how to animate them, how to create logos with text, or even promo videos with the help of AI. If you learned anything new today, please share the video or give me a like or subscribe, and I'll see you next time.